You guys know I enjoy showing you stuff you don't want to see. <laughs> Love it. So we're going to watch this uh, really briefly. We're going to watch this trailer for... Um, it's called Destiny of X trailer, which is the next X-Men stuff. So I want to... Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. This I is why we don't know. review Marvel, because we all just go, fuck. <laughs> no. Don't listen to the Marvel. I'll read it all. Hang on. Hang on. Is it actually called Destiny of X or is it Destiny of 10? Because I'm so getting really fucking the, sick of the use of that. This is the trailer. So it looks like rising out of the Inferno, <clears throat> the X lives, and, and it, it's all leading to the second age of Krakon, which is... Oh, second uh, age? The, fuck The Destiny life. of X. <laughs> Well, listen, let's watch the trailer and then we'll figure out if uh, they hate us or not. Uh, so let's watch this real quick. Uh, I know we're running long, but we'll, we'll go to recommendations right after this. But I just want to show you guys this. I haven't seen it either, so I don't know what to expect. Oh, all right. Uh, I do like so, the, the callback here to uh, yeah, the it's, uh, you know, hot spots. Yeah. But different people. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I'm so hyped for this one. God, end it now. Yes. Finally included Deadpool in the X Men. Al Ewing. <laughs> yeah, he's on. He's dude. He's working on everything. <laughs> cool. So they 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 revealed their ongoing series. All right, quick quick thoughts, Kyle. I'll start with you because you're shaking your head. Garbage. I don't want to see any more of this. I want to go back to one X Men book, and that's <laughs> yeah. it. I'm sorry. I'm that's done harsh. with this Krakoa bullshit. <laughs> All right. So Kyle's not gonna be reading the X Men. I mean, maybe one or two of those books I might have like. The Legion of X with Nightcrawler and Juggernaut kind of looks yeah. a little bit interesting. But other than that, I just, I'm done with I tried reading some of the other books, and they're just – they're so full of themselves. You know, we talk about that Batman problem with with, uh, with DC. I think there's a it's X-Men overwhelm. Uh, there's an amount of – Yeah, X-Men's gotten you, too convolu convoluted. Did you see Jonathan Hickman's name in there at all? Nope. No, of course not. He, well, he's he, off. I mean, he's, he's gone. So. Yeah, he's taking a break. He stepped back. <laughs> yeah, but very when clear. you have somebody who created this universe and now it's yeah. handed off to a bunch of different people that may not have the same idea or concept, it just seems like if it's not run by the right editor. And, yeah. and again, I'm not going to buy any of these, but I love Jerry Duggan. I love uh, him and Phil Noto doing stuff. Yeah. I, you know, there are people in there. I want to buy their books, let, but mm -hmm. there are so many fucking X-Men books. Let me say this. I'm not knocking the artist or writers who are going to be working on the books. I just, I'm oh, done no. with this, 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 uh, I'm done with this X-Men universe stuff. I don't want, I just, it's too much. Like you, you asked Daniel, if there was too much Batman up and I'm like, no, Batman seems to be still be rambling to an area. The X-Men is just, it's, I can't keep up with everything. Yeah. Well, here's okay. So here's th this. That trailer summarizes the exact reason I couldn't get into this after Hoxpox, right? Yeah. And and that is the fact that I I will still stand by. I think that reinvention of the universe was brilliant. It was compelling, and then they fucked it up right out of the gate by having 12 different titles that you had to read every single one of to understand the story. And I'm just like, yeah. I mean, to your point, Kyle, like just give me X-Men, just give me an X-Men title where the, or maybe two tops, right? Yeah, yeah. Where these things are happening. And that's what they did with Hotspots. It was two titles interrelated, you know, I, I just, and so to me, like I'm watching that trailer and I'm like, 
I okay, so the one title I recognize is X Men, and it's what X thirteen, like and it's then Rose, that, yeah, Rose got a, like a sniper rifle and, and a like, gun, and I'm like, wow, what? Like that's the only title I recognize. It's like, like it's so big. It's like the X Men should be its own damn universe. It's like I, if you're if you're a Marvel fan and want to read Marvel books, you can't because Mar- X Men's taking up half the damn side of it. It's like it's just too much. Yeah. Well, and. And and I think that's I mean my impression is that's what Hickman was trying to do was, was reinvent and make a new X Men universe. The problem is, but if, if if they had started that with just at most at most six titles, I could see getting into it. Right. Right. They went double that. It was it was overkill. And then most of those <laughs> Daniel's loving this conversation, by the way. And then most of those titles ended after twelve issues, and there were other titles well, and it's like I'll be sure about what that. is I, happening i have no interest in reading books with the villains working with the x-men i want the heroes I and mean, that's just me it's like you know i, I want them fighting yeah. the villains you know it just i'm i i thought krakoa was a brilliant idea i liked i i i bought into the concept i was really fascinated first, it just it was too much to keep up with it didn't seem like they know where they want to go with it it's just like right. it's like yeah, yeah. you've got the, you've got the x-men nation and you had, you had the x-men nation when you had Asteroid M in the Bay of San Francisco. You had the X Men Nation, you know, you know, numerous times in Genosha. You had, you know, it's. But again, it's just. I like. I don't know. It's it's just too much for me to care about the X Men universe anymore. I, I liked it when it was like you know, back in the eighties and nineties when you had New Mutants, you had X Factor, you had X Men, and you had uh, Excalibur. They were their own yeah. separate teams, but they they were still come. You know, they were still set in the X universe. And it was, but it was so small you could, you could read the book and still enjoy it. Now it's just you've got so many different things. You're not you're not even sure who's going to be on what team and what book by the next three weeks from there. It's like, now, Kitty could be leading the, the Marauders this week, and the next week you see her guest starring in X Factor, the New Mutants, and then it's like, oh, she's on the X Men team. It's like, wait, how does this all cross over? And why do I have to? And, and now the X Men are on Mars. It's just like, no, I want a centralized location where the mutants are going to be focused, not trying to take over half the damn universe. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm glad you brought that up, Kyle, because I can't wait till Jonathan Hickman comes back and the mutants from Morocco realize that they're like oh we are stronger than the mutants from earth and we're gonna fucking kill them all and i think that's <laughs> i think that's where this is all leading maybe why would why that's would they want to kill them be all a big all crossover a because they're better they they've even surpassed they're i think the Araco mutants feel like they could be the next step in evolution of the mutants uh from from the the mutants from earth there's so always does, been kind of does they, magneto lead them then no like, no no there's like an uneasy Piece between the groups from Morocco that came from the other un- from the other dimension mm, yeah. and the mutants from Earth, but but I think right now and they've had they've had fights where Storm has to be the one that's like you could try to kill me, but I am the ambassador in Mars, and you have to listen to what I'm saying. So there's a lot of there's a lot of seeds I, that they planted for that. I'm gonna be straight up honest. I will be glad when this whole we are resurrection bullshit's done. At first, I thought it was interesting, but I, I'm tired of the X Men. Oh, we can die and come back, die and come back. It's like, no, it's. I don't know. I, 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 I'm just. I'm not the audience they're trying to write for right now. Right. So. I. I. I want. I want the oral history of how all this rolled out because I feel like Hickman set up a really inter- <laughs> yeah no set up a really done like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Sorry. Um. Like a behind the, the behind scenes, the scenes yeah. behind the scenes, right? I yeah. feel like Hickman set up a very fascinating, interesting reinvention of the mutants, and I want to know at what point because I feel like I feel like Hickman wouldn't have made this call. I could be wrong. At what point did Marvel step in and go, "Man, this is really great. We need twelve titles off the gate." Oh God, right? What and and. Unlike back in the eighties, where I could, I could, I would only read Excalibur and be able to follow what the fuck was going on. You couldn't follow the story because I tried. You guys know I tried. I tried reading yeah, only yeah. X Men, right, mm-hmm. and one other title. And I and I would say like I'm reading issue three. I have no idea what they're talking about. It's like we got to go read the other ten issues. I'm like, God damn it! Like, just yeah. give me like. It's like you hit a home run. And then you're just bunting from that point on. And by the way, that's a terrible sport analogy, but it's the only one I'll make ever. No, it makes sense. It makes sense <laughs> it, to me. It just, it's so bad. It, oh, it makes me but so But they're angry. still scoring runs. Yeah. Ugh. 
I, well, I, thank you. I was, thank you I was excited. That one home, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. I, I was excited with, you know, House of X and Powers of X. And now I yeah. just don't care. I don't read the X-Men books at all. Like I'm behind. And it's like, my, I, it's weird because it's like suddenly X-Men wasn't on the shelf. And I see that my store started cutting back on orders because they were stuck with so many X-Men books that now like e either you pre-order, you don't get it. Like if you don't yeah. show up that Wednesday, you don't get it. So it's like, I'm behind on X-Men and it's like, I kind of don't care. You know, yeah. like I'm enjoying mm -hmm. other stuff uh, because X-Men is just so much, so time consuming to find out what's going on. Yeah. 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 And I don't mind the good guys and bad guys working together. I kind of like that concept. Me of, too. Yeah. Of these people who are uh, united by birth, by being mutants, but always been at odds and suddenly having to figure out as citizens of a mutant nation what they can do together. Mm -hmm. But again, that's more cerebral than any kind of fighting you're going to see on here. It's kind I of mean, a cool X Men book. The thing I liked about Hoxpox was it. it it resolved a lot of weirdly the dangling like it it resolved the core idea of the original x-men series under claremont right? right it resolved that it set a path for the future could easily bring in all these new readers and then it ch they just fucked it up like it it's so infuriating it's so infuriating i was so excited to read x-men again and for them to mess it up this bad. I, I don't know. It just oh, I just God. don't know how Hickman thought that it would like not resolve, but the path of this book after he leaves it. Right. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. And and I guess this goes back to the original point you were making, Clay, that did he have some vision in mind and now that he's just kind of left Marvel and they put it in other hands, if that vision's gone, right? So Right.